Who apprentices and acolytes? Your boy is ready and he's back. We got Andor, we got the trailers, we got everything coming up. But this Wednesday, fam, the three part episode coming in. Unlock the knowledge is back. Ready up. Ready up. My destiny. Welcome, apprentices and acolytes, back from the dead after the five week, six week, six week rest that we had. Your boy is feeling better and he's ready to react and talk about the knowledge because you know this is the place. Into the Dark Temple, visited by Mara Jade, Luke Skywalker, and Kyle Katan, and so many of the Force sensitives like yourself coming in to unlock one thing, the knowledge. Ooh, it has been a long time since I have said that, fam, and your boy still hasn't lost it. We might be a little rusty, but hey, you know what? We're here. We had a really good time. Shoutouts to Lee, my boy, giving me the dark saber. I don't know how the fate of Mandalore is going to be now since I was gifted the dark saber just like Bo-Katan. But you know what, fam? I think we're going to take the risk because that's the way we do it. Yes, let's go. <laughs> yeah, baby. I'm so hyped, fam. There's so much to talk about. Did you see the trailers? Oh, Tales of the Jedi coming out of nowhere. The Mandalorian Season 3. And a special look at Andor. There was so much. And the behind the scenes of the Kenobi series. Oh my god, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? The first three episodes of Kenobi weren't the get, get, whatever. You know, but oh my god, it did what it needed to do. And when I'm watching the behind the scenes, man, it is so freaking good. I love it so much. You could, it doesn't matter who is working on these projects, it doesn't matter how good or bad you think they are, at the end of the day, these, these people really care about Star Wars, they, they really come in, they want to do their homework, they do the best that they can to really show what they have, what they have to offer, how exactly all of this is going to come in and, and just make make our livelihoods, you know, oh, man, you know, as, as a prequel kid, I loved the prequels so much going up and I, and I needed Kenobi, or a form of Kenobi, to do what it has done, and it did exactly what it needed to, and that was make me feel inside <laughs> depressed. Not really, but when I see Anakin Skywalker and I watch the Obi-Wan Kenobi fight again, and yeah, I wish, you know, maybe they had Duel of Fates or Anakin's Dark Deeds or Battle of Heroes or something. Ah, oh, man, I watched it though, and, and that's what I feel. I needed that. I needed the Anakin and Kenobi and, and the brokenness, you know, that feel of the emotions just kind of resurrecting, bringing me back all the way to 2005, Revenge of the Sith mode, baby, watching that stuff every single night of the week. <laughs> I loved it, man. I loved it. I, I loved it so much. But let's talk about Tales of the Jedi really quick. And then we're going to get into Andor, uh, because I got, I got a little stuff to talk about that, and I'm, uh,. I'm 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 getting pretty hype about Andor, and I'm not sure that I was going to get like as hype. Look, listen, I was excited. Every I get excited for everything Star Wars, but like there's a certain level, okay, to go even farther beyond. You know, like there's a certain level, okay. Ha! Ah! <laughs> there's a certain level of excitement that you get, for me at least. And but then there's like Lord Dagavir excited, right? And then there's, we're, we're tipping toes into the realms that I try not to go in because I don't want to be made fun of all the time because I've still been holding back about how excited I can get about these things. And someday these chains are going to be broken and your boy's just going to go full Dagavir, okay? <laughs> and, and it's, I don't know if it's going to be good because usually it's not because I just get too excited and I, and I act like a crazy fam. Anyway, man. Tales of the Jedi hit me so hard, and if you guys have not seen my reaction to that trailer yet, oh my god, god, you go out and watch watch the trailer, okay? Because the the entire reaction is filled with oh my goodness. But something about the animation, man. When I'm looking at this, and I'm and I'm I'm looking at the animation as as we go through it. Oh my god, like the way Anakin looks, the, the facial features, you know, the fidelity, right? That's the quality of the way the animation looks and how in-depth it goes. Young Dooku, look at this guy, man, with this blue lightsaber and, and with Mace Windu as well. And if you have not read Dooku, Jedi Lost, it is one of the freaking heckin' greatest books that I've ever read because it deals with 
his entire story and Sereno and his family, but also, like, you get to see the true flaws of the Jedi Order. I mean, there's a pregnant lady that's inside their midst in the council, and then there's other stuff happening, and then Dooku has to see all this while also training Qui-Gon Jinn, and then, you know, the Jedi doesn't want to deal with his problems that he has on Sereno where his family is. You know, he's a count. He kind of has that responsibility by family to, to go back and kind of save them, bring them out of that issue because he can clearly see that the Republic is not capable of saving his entire planet, his system. So there's a lot of stuff to go here. You know, Dooku is not just a, a regular dude, and I think and I feel like his story has been slept on. You know, the, the entire year we've had Maul fleshed out, Ahsoka, what about your boy that's in two of the movies, and also arguably in, in, in The Phantom Menace because of what's happening behind the scenes. You only know about Qui-Gon Jinn, you don't know about his master at that time, but there's still so much happening revolving around the world of Plagueis and Malgus and the dark side and things like that. And honestly, Dooku being lost. Lost. And I felt like in the expanded universe, as you watch Count Dooku in the movies, yeah, you see this guy that gets killed by Anakin Skywalker. You see this guy that ultimately betrayed the Jedi Order and is working with Palpatine, the Emperor, but you have no idea how he feels about what is happening. You know, he knows potentially that Palpatine is going to betray him in some fashion, but he also does not want to hurt the Jedi. He sees them as brothers, and I feel like that complexity of a character ultimately has kind of been tarnished and maybe ruined a little bit because we haven't, they haven't really shown that much of it. You only know about Dooku and what's happening here. Dooku Jedi Lost really exposed the, the turmoil inside Dooku, and his ultimate frustration and his destruction to turning into, into the dark side so i love this i love to see how much more we can get of him and honestly it's it's about damn time but did you see the inquisitor oh my gosh oh my goodness gracious it is amazing it is so I, God damn, whoever, whoever created this character had been playing SWOTOR for days and days. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a Sith helmet that looks almost exactly identical to this because my Sith assassin has the same exact look, man. So I wonder if your boy was mopping someone up who created this story because I had that same appearance and your boy was top of the leaderboards every single time on Jung Ma server PvP, baby. You couldn't deal with the double blade. But no, that's probably not what happened, but I love how much of an identity that this Inquisitor has. And I'm assuming this is gonna be one of the Inquisitors that we get to see with Ahsoka. And I'm not sure, excuse me, um, excitement got the best of me. I'm not sure if this is going to be a retcon because, you know, we see Yaddle, we see Count Dooku, and then of course the novel Jedi Lost, the Ahsoka book as well. Oh man, I just need to watch it, okay? I just need to watch it right now. I need the answers right now. But you know what I want, man? If we can do this really, really well, right? Let's say, let's say Tales of the Jedi just pops off, baby. It just does so freaking well. We got viewers, we got everything, we got sub money. Disney, give me Tales of the Jedi as a series, but in different eras. Give it to me during the Empire. Give it to me during the, uh, the New Republic and the Resistance. You know, give it to me. Oh, please, High Republic, baby, Old Republic, come on, give it to me right now, you got it all, and I know you got those models of Revan and Bane and everybody else, Nihilus, let's go, fam, bring them over, get that inspiration, start telling me tales of the Jedi from the Old Republic, baby, you know, I know, man, it's, I, I feel like it's there, I feel like it's working, and I feel like we're closer every single day, give me some characters, man. Let us know. Bring in some more stories because this is what makes Star Wars beautiful. And you know what? We need more animation, bro. We need more animation, apprentices and acolytes. I haven't been doing the podcast in a while and I totally forgot what I called everybody. <laughs> I'm the worst. Give it to me, man. Give it to me. Oh, jeez. Uh, give it to me. I'm ready. I'm ready, baby. I'm ready. All right. Enough of the Tales of the Jedi. Let's go win Mandalorian Season 3. Did you see that trailer? Did you see that? I feel like I'm gonna <laughs> ask that so much. The trailer was insane. Everything looks so good, and there's still probably so much production that's happening. Bo-Katan, I feel so sorry for her. I don't know what the story is. I really don't want to see a Mandalorian faction war again. I feel like, not, not because like I don't want to see it, like, I don't want to see that storyline. That's not interesting. No, 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 no. I just feel so bad for Mandalore <laughs> because they've just been fighting each other for so long. They've been having all these issues. Oh my god, man, the planet is like destroyed and blah, 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 blah. you know, it's it's not a good time for Mandalore and Mandalorians. 
Uh, this is almost going to be... Wait a minute, you know, you really think about it, this is kind of like a, a, a Jedi story, right? You know, the Empire, all but lost. You know, Mando is, is ultimately, like, you know, he's a fossil in a sense uh, of his entire, what he is, you know, his, his, his best guard, his Mandalorian armor, Boba Fett. You know, dude, they're tales of an old age, honestly. They are the final pieces of <laughs> this uh, precursors and forerunners be before them of ancestry, right? They represent so much history with the Mandalorian Wars and, of course, Mandalore and the Mandalorians and everything else. A and now it looks like the Enclave is, is pretty much gone, but there is a strand of Mandalorians that still is around, and it's his cult, it's his people. Uh, so I, I can't wait to see how the way ends up being a thing, and what's going to happen with the Mandalores of Bo-Katan and, and the Night Owls, and of course what's going on here with everything else, man. It's just kind of a crazy to see where we've come from, and just this little story of a backwatered frickin' no, nobody Mandalorian who's become a huge somebody, and ultimately the representation of the entire brand of Star Wars. But one of my favorite pieces of this actually is the concept art here, and that's actually about 50 seconds into the trailer, exactly about 50 seconds, and you have Mandalore, uh, excuse me, uh, you have uh, Din Djarin, and then you have all the other Mandalorians right beside him, you know, with the orange and the white and orange and the white and silver, oh, man, the helmets, they look so cool, man, so freaking sweet, and there's one art piece in particular that comes up to me when I think about this, and that is actually from the Mandalorian first series, the Star Wars, the art of the Star Wars Mandalorian season one, and Din Djarin is actually a showing Baby Yoda, Grogu, to everybody. To everybody, and it's a whole bunch of Mandalorians, and there's a bunch of Mandalorians that look exactly like them that are in this, and I, I just love it, man. I love material that ends up being used in different ways, in different forms, because I feel like at the end of the day, you have so many people who just don't read the books, you know, they don't read the comics, maybe they don't even watch animation, some of them don't even watch other movies, you know, maybe it's the standalones, or uh, different eras of, you know, of the Star Wars story, whether it's the prequels or the sequels, and I feel like at times, because they miss out on that, they, yeah, that's what it is, it's a missed opportunity to see the rest of the universe that you love, and now you get this, in another form, in another representation, in another language, in another expression. So you're introduced to it, and I feel like this is some of the greatest Star Wars that we've honestly are ever going to get, man. I mean, the Mandalorian is what it is, and I keep hearing rumors about Andor, but we'll get to that in a second. And I'm very excited. I don't know what the hell is happening here with uh, Grief Karga and Navarro, but it looks like I don't even know if that is Navarro. Navarro at, at, at 115, with the way he's looking at everything, uh, it looks like the city is prospering so much because they honestly were. They have a, they had a whole school and everything before, and a statue of IT11, man. And and who knows what's happening now? Who knows what the heck is happening now with this series? And and just. Din Djarin, like, where is this story going to go? Are we actually going to see a mythosaur? Are we? You have to. You have to tell me. Listen, Disney, Star Wars. If you're out there and you want to send somebody an invite to The Mandalorian season three, it's probably not going to be me. Okay, I'm not there yet. One day, hopefully. But I'm just saying, if if there's is going to be a mythosaur in this season, you have to send me a letter and tell me just to prepare myself. Don't spoil it. Just prepare myself, because. I, I'm gonna have to tell the entire neighborhood to go in a hotel that week because I'm gonna run around like a madman <laughs> from excitement. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh my god, uh, the Mandalorian. I don't think anybody's ready for the Mandalorian. This was just a minute, 50 second trailer with only about a minute and 25 seconds worth of footage. Everything was new, and I couldn't, I couldn't handle it, man. Everything was new, a part of like a couple of seconds from the original season, man, but... God dang, god dang, man! <sighs> My god, dude, I, I, I'm i not ready, next year I'm not gonna be ready, and we haven't even seen a Bad Batch trailer, bruh! What the, what the heck, man? <laughs> we haven't even seen a dang Bad Batch trailer, so... Alright, let's get into it, okay? So, uh, dude, 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 here we go. The Andor official trailer hit me so hard, like... I was not prepared for the quality 
of this show. And you can completely tell just by looking at the trailer. Because you know what? You know what I feel like a lot of shows have kind of... Even Star Wars shows, even The Mandalorian. They don't really look like the movies. Uh, I want to say like Kenobi at times had a very fakey look to it. Just because you could tell how production kind of worked and, and dealt with the issues of COVID and things like that. And uh, like I could tell in some of the shots, I was like, okay, yeah, definitely. They're, they're, they definitely have issues here. Um, but it's never bad, right? But even The Mandalorian, where I look at it, I'm just like, okay, yeah, man. Dude, I love the props on this. It's fantastic. But I feel like just from the trailers, okay, from Andor, the CGI and just everything, the way the looks and the angles, it makes me feel like this is going to be like 16 episodes of lost footage of Rogue One that we never got to see because it literally looks like it's from the movie itself. The production quality is insane and every single time I look at the YouTube trailers and I see them spinning in space, it makes me feel like it literally came from that movie. I don't know how a production team managed this. Even Lucasfilm, we are talking about ILM that is really literally responsible for so many things like Photoshop and everything else and editing software. Like, bro, they are, they are the dudes and ladies that did this all. They are the people. You know, but even then, it, it's still so hard for me to look at something. And then when I look back and I was like, oh, my God, this is kind of identical. This looks exactly like this. Who did this? Who made this? You know, this is insane. This entire team is, is amazing. And then I'm hearing stuff about the soundtrack and the boot and the show hasn't even come out yet. I didn't get an invite to Andor, but your boy did get High Republic books. A thank you. But... I'm still like super okay with me missing out on it because everyone is just so excited. I, outside of one person that's like trending on Twitter who I don't really agree with a lot of the stuff that they have said, even with the other shows, everyone is like really positive. And I have not seen that reception since The Mandalorian. And when I find someone who doesn't like The Mandalorian, it's literally like a person. You know, or, or someone else. It, like, it, there is a very small group. Yeah, like, The Mandalorian, I feel like, is one of the most loved Star Wars things since the original trilogy, you know? Like, and that's not bashing anything else. It's just recepti re reception, okay? Analytics and, and, like, taking a poll. Like, if you pull out there and, and put, what do you love the most? This movie or this movie or that thing or that thing. There is a certain thing that is very liked in Star Wars in the fandom. And whether it's one or two, you always can understand what's going to be picked in that poll. And that's what I'm referring to here. It's like, everybody is yesing this. Everybody is liking this. So, are we about to get another Mandalorian series here? I'm not, like, comparing it to the Mandalorian. I'm only comparing it to the Mandalorian in terms of, like, reception, right? Because this is by far one of the most different uh, anything that we've gotten out of Star Wars. It's going to be heavily political, uh, very drama-esque, and that's what I loved about Rogue One, because it was like a drama, man. It was, and it worked so well. There's a lot of people that do not like Rogue One, but for me, you could not give me enough of Rogue One for me to be bored of it, because I've almost watched Rogue One as much as I've seen Revenge of the Sith, and that is saying something, because that is my favorite movie, fam. Man, I love Revenge of the Sith so much, but I was, if you told me that I had to watch Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One, Rogue, like, that's it, those are the only two movies I could watch during that day, then, man, yeah, I would, like, sit there, and I'm like, dude, I love Revenge of the Sith, but I would not, like, I would not, it would not be an easy pick for me, like, I would have to second guess, and then finally, you know, Revenge of the Sith would win, but Rogue One is that good to me, I love that so much, and when I watch these trailers, I literally think I'm getting the same product, I do. They showed you the behind the scenes, uh, or a special look at Andor. I think it was like 10 minutes long, right, on Disney Plus. Go check it out if you haven't, please. Code Dagavir in the chat. That's probably never going to happen, but hey, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, man, I stopped watching it. What? You're praising it so much. What do you mean you stopped watching it? I stopped watching it, fam. Why? Tell us. Because it was too good. <laughs> it was... It was too good. The scene was too good. The acting was too good. I got too into it. I don't want to ruin it. I don't like watching trailers that much outside of my reaction. And I don't like watching behind the scenes or Easter egg stuffs or leaks and stuff because I feel like it ruins the experience. I like, 
I like going into these things without a single influence outside of myself, my own excitement. Because there's a certain way that I can manifest excitement and hype and, and it generates inside my body when I absorb it. I mean, even the smallest things, like I remember Kenobi was in Bad Batch, like I was so damn hype for, oh my God, you know, for the Dianoga. Like, who get, like, I mean, Dianoga is a Dianoga, but I was like, it's a Dianoga, you know, and I got so excited and I like, you know, I had a lot of people making fun of me because it was the Bad Batch and a lot of the Bad Batch episodes were seen as like slow and boring, you know, and I like, I don't care. I just like being in the universe, I enjoy it, you know, I'll eat it all up just like a buffet every single day, baby, I ain't paying for that, but I don't know, we'll worry about that, we'll wash dishes because I like it so much, you know, <laughs> so I just really enjoy it, and when I was watching these two go at it with Cassian and uh, uh, Luthen, I think his name, Luthen Rail, I think his name is the new character, uh, it, it was it was the best it was the best acting I'd ever seen, man. It was just it was just one scene, bro. Like I'm I'm literally like rubbing my forehead right now because I'm so frustrated at how good it is. <laughs> like what? That's a thing? Yes, it is. Like I just, it's insane to me what creative people can do, and, and they sit in the same room and they come together. Especially like D uh, Diego Luna. You know, when you watch Rogue One, you think, oh man, that guy's never gonna play another Star Wars thing ever again. But this is actually his third time reprising the role. What, his third time being Diego? Yes, oh, sorry, Diego, sorry, Cassian. Yes, this is his third time. Because the other time he did it was um, a part of the uh, Disney VR experience. Uh, where you go get the proto saber uh, and that I actually got to do that too and he was really cool and he was doing that man so maybe this is a thing maybe we're gonna see more of his character not outside of this uh, but I was watching that scene and I was just getting so into it I, I was just I felt like they were showing me the episode a episode um, and I just need it right now uh, I have to wait a couple more days here but, <laughs> you know, but I still need it. I, I need it right now. I want it. I want it right now, man. I'm, I'm really excited. Three episodes that are going to be coming your way in reactions. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to sit there and watch, sit there and watch and react, sit there and watch and react. Maybe, I, maybe I'll do that. Um, but yeah, fam, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be insane. And I cannot wait to sit here and break down every single piece of Star Wars with you. Talk about it. Get excited for it, man. It's going to be so damn hype, my guys. I'm so happy Star Wars is back. I'm so happy I am back creating content. It's been a journey. Uh, I actually have a lot to talk to you about. Why I was actually missing for so long. But I'll, I have a, blo a blog. Vlog? Blah, 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 blah. A vlog that I'm working on. And you are going to see, and we're going to talk, and I can't wait to see you, because we back, baby. Let's go. And there's only one place that you can find this. From the Dark Temple, visited by Mera Jade, Luke Skywalker, and Kyle Katarn, and so many of the Force sensitive like yourself. Please, fam, apprentices and acolytes, thank you so much for coming by. Make sure you hit that follow, and you can listen in on anywhere, an Apple podcast, baby, because that's the way we do it. Hope you all enjoy yourself. Thank you so much for coming out. Deuces, fam.